Good morning, everyone. Fancy seeing you here. It is another day in Paris. We're going to be exploring the city a bit more. We're starting off our day with some croissants and, of course, doing some more touristy sites. Musée d'Orsay, Luxembourg Gardens. There's going to be even more delicious food, French bistro classics. I'm very excited. Are you excited, Yami? Yes. Yes, so let's go. We got the bag, we got the bag, but what is in the bag? I'm incredibly excited for this croissant. I kind of wish we had a coffee, but whatever. We'll appreciate this croissant in its purest form. Look at the layers in that. I love the spiral layers, honestly. First bite. Mm -mm. That is a good, simple, but effective croissant. Every layer is a uh, nice and golden and um, buttery and fluffy. I like the light crunch that this uh, croissant has. I'll, let me try to pull that apart. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. That's nice. As far as croissant goes, that's a pretty good plain croissant. As really good as this croissant is, this is for our New Zealand subscribers, which is most of you guys. Don't think you have to go to Paris, all the way to Paris, to get some of the best croissants you'll ever have. Because I think this was like best croissant, voted best croissant in 2018, and it's still reputed to be as one of the best in Paris. But not gonna lie, I've had better in, in, in Auckland, you know? <laughs> so, you don't, just, just saying, you don't, you don't need to go all the way here to get some quality croissant as good as this is. Well, I'm not trashing on this one, because this is actually really amazing. If it was a bit warmer, it'll be, it'll be amazing with a cup of coffee. I love it so much, but... Mm. Okay, so our parents got a Kugan Amon. It's pretty hench. Okay. I just like how it just shines. Mm. Very buttery, sweet. Just that crunch from the cooled down caramel. Really good. I must say, the market just outside the bakery is very charming. You know, it's like a nice everyday farmer's market. You got all sorts of fresh produce, butchery, seafood, cheeses, even flowers and some knickknacks as well. But yes, um, we are on our way to um, Musée d'Orsay, so I'm just gonna eat this on the way. I'm gonna do this as we walk. Um, this might end disastrously. Um, this is this was a, some sort of apple pastry. I forgot what the pastry name was, but it looks very caramelized at the top and very flaky. Yeah, we already took a bite, but... Ooh! Ooh, the pastry is like offers little to no resistance. This gives way to this nice light apple filling. Oh, oh I like this. Oh. That's pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah. That's good as well. It's not too chocolatey. Okay. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. This is very light. Like it's even more like delicate pastry than the croissant. Wow. Same as the pot chocolate. Mmm. I have a bar. This one's a bit more light. Interesting. Nice. Mm. So we made it to the uh, to the Musée d'Orsay, which is actually a former train train station called the Gare d'Orsay uh, that was built for the 1900 Universal Exhibition. It's absolutely beautiful. We also got some audio guides because apparently there's not a lot of information um, near the painting, so we're gonna learn today. So that should be fun. This was in the Emily in Paris season three. I cannot remember this. Oh, they went into the the clock. I'll put a clip. Yummy, yummy. I have something to show you. Can you see those two paintings? <laughs> what? They must have rearranged it. <laughs> oh, but it's those two that, paintings City Dance, Country Dance. That needs to be.
you remember the Bean movie? Not Mr. Bean's Holiday, but the one before that, where he messes up a painting, and then like, do you remember this? Oh. <laughs> so that is Whistler's mother. <laughs> that is his right there, fully restored and impeccable condition. <laughs> Okay, that was a good visit to the uh, Musée d'Orsay. Um, took us around two hours, 45, three hours. But yes, as with any other museum visit, it always builds up an appetite for us. So now we're gonna have lunch at this place called Chez Fernand. Hopefully we can get a table and try their legendary beef bourguignon. Let's go. Welcome to lunch. We are here at Chez Fernand since 1970. Apparently it's a real classic spot in the vibe. It has the vibe to match. I love the, the, the decor, the exposed wood and whatnot in the, the chalkboard menu, of course. And um, we are here, of course, for their beef bourguignon. The wine has arrived, their house red wine. You know, red wine with, their, with, a, with red meats. Very excited, let's see. Okay, so our duck foie gras has arrived. I have never had this before. And it also comes with a cider jelly. It's looking very interesting. Also comes with some bread. This part, because it has a bit of the foie gras, gras. I'm intrigued. Okay, I'll put a generous helping. And just a, li a little bit of this cider jelly. Bon appetit! <laughs> Mm, very creamy, salty. It's a little bit sweet, which I quite like. Anyways, if you don't know what foie gras is, so basically, it's in this case, it's duck. It's the liver that's been forced fed. You know, it gets all fatty. That's basically what it is. So ethically, you know, maybe not the best, but can't deny that it's delicious. <laughs> The correspondence is back to me. Anyway, we got roasted cod this time. This cod also comes with a leek fondue. Now I am wondering what a true fondue is. A beautiful white meat. Oh, it's looking really good. Can you see how like flaky that is? King view is Okay. Cheers. Mm. Mm. That is nice. Just the texture of that cod is so good. I mean, every cod we have is like just meaty yet tender and flaky and light. And the leek just adds a nice freshness to it. I will have to add some extra seasoning just because it is a little bland. But that's okay. That's why they offer salt and pepper. Pep it up. Mm. Nothing but a little seasoning can't do. That is excellent. We're gonna dig into the beef bourguignon. It looks absolutely luscious and deep and menacing. There actually isn't that much beef associated with it. Kind of wish it came with a bit more. Probably only like a grand total of like four pieces of beef, but whatever. We also had to add some salt and pepper just because uh, it was lacking a little bit of a, of a seasoning. <laughs> That is deep and complex and super savory. That's nice. I like that. And it also comes with some potatoes. Okay. Maybe put it on some bread. Actually, I'll dump it. I mean, you can really taste the wine in it because before we know it's better with like a bottle of red wine. That's great. Kind of wish it just came with a bit more, a bit more beef though, because I can't get it up of that. The beef was also really nice and fatty and tender. Final dish in this relatively light lunch, but first. House wine, you know, this is there. Cassoulet. It's a traditional French stew. 
It's got like beans, pork, chicken, sausages. It's got the works. How can you resist this? hearty goodness in the middle of a cold, cold winter. I got some uh, sausage a while ago and maybe some, some of the beanaroonies. Okay. Mm, that's good. That is good. The sausage as well. Amazing. I love the beans. They're like little starchy beans that give a nice uh, starchy texture. But what I'm most interested about is this. Look at this gelatinous hunk of what can only probably be pork. Oh yeah, that's a nice hunky piece of pork. That looks glorious. Super fatty and gelatinous and super tender. It's like when you eat um, braised pork pop. Maybe it is pork pop. I'll just take a bite of the chicken drumstick. Mm. Nice. Yeah, it's got a different color now. Maybe because it's been soaking up that broth for so long. Also, at the very bottom of this cassoulet, it looks like a pork rib. Yes, we love a good old meat treasure hunt. Let's just take a bite. Oh my god. You know it's just been cooked down for so long because that is so tender and fatty and succulent. I'm glad we are having this in winter because this is exactly what we need. Final dish. You know we had to get the dessert. And what a classic dish we got. It's the creme brulee. It's looking really, really. Oh, oh yeah, you already know. That crack is gonna be really good. Okay. Yeah. I can smell the caramelized sugar, you know? There's like obviously the lighter caramelized part and like the dark ones looking really smooth. Mm. That's a good, that's a good creme brulee. Very soaky, very creamy. Just enough of that caramelized topping to give it that perfect sweetness. That is a very delicious creme brulee. Okay, I'm gonna taste that one with the, all the vanilla at the side. Mm. That's nice, that's real nice. I wish we had another one. Yeah, oh yeah. gonna lie one thing I've never been a fan of whenever we the two times we've visited Europe is the paid toilets but we've been uh, pleasantly surprised here in Paris that most of the like 95% of the toilets we visited have been free so far so good on you that's the way it should be all right so we've just been roaming around Paris and we finally made the walk to the very, very beautiful Luxembourg Gardens. It was commissioned by Marie Medici. Yes, that, that family in the 17th century. But yes, this is an absolutely beautiful park. You've got all sorts of activities. You've got children on swings. You've got basketball. You've got um, tennis. You've got people playing chess. It's amazing. She actually also commissioned around 2,000 elm trees to be planted around this garden, which is why you see so many of these trees lined in such perfect fashion around the garden. It would have been a sight to see when it actually has leaves, but it's actually still very beautiful. Go on, Yambi. You can go in. Go in. Do <laughs> it's only for kids. What about kids at heart? I'm gonna break the horse <laughs> You know, a lively, lively Saturday here at the Luxembourg Park. Also, right in front of me. You know, right in front of me, you've got the actual Luxembourg Palace. As far as palaces go here in uh, Paris, pretty tame, even though it's pretty, I'm sure it's pretty extravagant. You've got kids doing their little, little sailboat thingies in the fountain. You know, got the duckies and the fishies. I feel like Luxembourg Gardens is really showing out today. Yes, these recliner seats. <sighs> I must say, even though the weather is you know it's cloudy it's not it's not sunny but who cares 
You got the recliner seats right in front of the Luxembourg Palace. Anyway, we've actually just spent like a good 30 minutes just lying down in these recliner seats. But we have things to do and places to see and things to eat. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's our signal to F off. <laughs> Bye. Kermit the Frog time because not not Kermit. We are here at Roger. Roger Le Grand Louis, which literally means Roger the Frog. It's a very cozy and intimate and small restaurant. But yes, we are here for one main thing and it is the frogs. Funnily enough, their frogs are sourced from Turkey. I didn't know that. I thought they would be sourced locally here in France, but I guess I guess Turkish frogs are better in some way. Not every item will have frogs, obviously. We can't just have frogs, so let's eat. Okay, starting with our non-frog option, we have the classic French onion soup. You know, it's covered with cheese on top. And then underneath, if you unveil that cheesy layer, it's some bread and then underneath that bread that's just soaking up the soup is your French onion. So it's six pound onion. That is looking really glorious. You can see that dark luscious soup. Okay. <laughs> It's like really flavorful and really savory and a little bit salty and I really like the the bread and the cheese to kind of add some flavor and kind of like a texture even though they're also kind of soft. It's like also really beefy. This is actually our dad's choice so he's going to really love this. All right, it's time to officially say rip to Kermit the Frog because we are about to dig into the frogs. This is their frogs with uh, three types of sauce just at the back here. Which I have no idea. Okay, by itself first. <laughs> That's delightful. That's just like a chicken lollipop. You know, frog tastes like chicken. That's just their type. I really like the breading. I'm gonna take this opportunity to try it with this. Which I believe may be some sort of mayo. Like that. That's like a real strong aioli. It's super pungent with the garlic, which, which we all know and love. I'll try it with this one. It's almost like a gravy. Fried chicken and gravy. That's lovely. Final sauce seems to be some sort of herb butter, maybe? Oh yeah, spread it into that frog, that delectable frog. Okay, I'm for sure gonna get some bones of this one. Right? Mm, that's lovely. It's like a sour, herby thing going on. But that's really lovely. I like that. Yeah, frog. It's just like chicken. There's nothing to be afraid about it. It's just another meat to eat. Okay, Funky Town is playing, and I feel like we are in Funky Frog Town right now. This is sturgeon with a caviar rient. You know, it also comes with some bread. As you know, caviar comes from sturgeon. So this is kind of like double sturgeon. Ooh, yeah, let's, oh yeah, let's load that up. Also has some uh, chives on top, you know, love some greenage. Bon appetit. Mm, yummy, 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 yummy. It's a lovely, fishy flavor. Mm, yeah, and the caviar is like not too strong, so it's not like super salty or anything. And the bread is nice and crunchy too. Right, before we get into our main courses, this is the aforementioned Chardonnay that we got. Arrogant frog, honestly, I don't care about the characteristics of this wine. We just saw it was named the Arrogant Frog, 
and hence we had to get it, of course. 2021 vintage, you know? Pizina, south of France. Wild lily pad white. The form. Swirl it. Swirl it. Check for residue. <laughs> and, uh, yes. If an arrogant frog was a wine, it would be this, I guess. Main course is time. <laughs> we got chicken, which you know, I mean, close enough. They say frog tastes like chicken, which I agree. So this one is chicken with a creamy sauce, vegetables, some mash, and some grapes. Let's go. Oh, oh, ooh, that is, that is tender. Yes, I am loving the look of that. Let's just, oh, every time I like pick it up, it just like falls apart in my fork. Let's rehydrate that. Get a grape. Get some mash. Gotta get everything in the first bite. Mm, that grape, it's like a very simple white sauce. The chicken is really like soft. And then you have this uh, burst of grape in your mouth to add that burst of sweetness and fruitiness. It's very lovely. Yeah. I like that. It's quite light. I don't really care how this this tastes. It's already a winner in my book because it comes with rice. This is their um, Gronwi on Pesiad Riz. It's a frog legs with garlic and parsley and rice. Obviously the meat to the rice ratio is not a Filipino ratio, but it's a ratio nonetheless, and that's better than zero. Oh, it comes in a nice sauce as well. It looks really nicely fried and herbed up. This piece is calling my name. Mm. Oh yeah. That is sufficiently garlicky and parsley. Chase it with some rice. It's gonna be happy to be that. Way. Mm, need some more of that. Quite a lot of bones, but parsley, garlic, sauce, rice. This is pretty. I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add the rice to the to the sauce. You like my Kermit the Frog impression? Put that down there to soak that sauce. Mm. Yeah, that's lovely. It is a bit expensive, I don't know. Maybe Turkish frogs are, are at a premium, but this is really nice. Mm. Ribbit, ribbit time for me. We got a Caesar salad. It's not just your ordinary Caesar salad. This is Caesar salad with bacon, some aioli, I'm guessing, and of course, our beloved fried frogs. You know, we got a Load it up with some veg. Oh yeah. I love this salad. They're so good. I mean, I love Caesar salad. I don't care if you say, oh my god, Caesar salad is barely a salad because it's so unhealthy. I don't care. Is that lettuce? You know, it's just so perfect. That's perfect lettuce. It's just like good dressing. It's so creamy. And the frog, where it's just fried to perfection. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Alright, um, that was a great meal, Roger La Grande. Love frogs, honestly. It's bony, but you know, it's an adventure. It's like a maze in your mouth, and there's nothing left to do but to down the arrogant frog very uncouthly. Oh, what the? I just want to get out of here and sleep. I'm so tired. But what a great dinner. Yeah. I must say, we're just hanging out by the Seine. Um, well, Notre Dame is just behind us. One of our favorite hobbies is uh, waving past the tourist canal boats. And if uh, none of them wave back, we curse their boat to eternal damnation. But if, they, if at least one of them says hi, we bless them with a safe journey and happy travels. Okay, another boat is passing us. Okay, let's, let's see if someone waves. Okay. Um, 
Hello, hello. Oh yeah, we saw someone wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy trip. <laughs> Happy travels, safe travels. Have the best time of your life. There's another one coming up. Okay, surely Are you they'll ready? wave. Surely they'll wave. Okay. Bonsoir. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Woo! Uh, fun and games aside, another amazing uh, day here in Paris full of delicious eats. I'm sure you were a fan of it as well, but the, uh, the Luxembourg Gardens relaxation moment. Yeah, that was peak relaxation. Yes, that was true. All I was missing was a blanket, my big plushy Mr. Trinkus, and my Udi. Anyway, catch us next week because we are going to Versailles. Yes. Ooh. Yes. So, live from uh, the River Seine, the Notre Dame behind us, Paris. Uh, thank you guys for watching another one of our food and travel videos. You know what I'm going to say. And see you on the next one. Bye bye. Bye. Hello. Hello. Bonsoir. Uh, I curse you. I curse. No, I, I didn't give him a fair chance. They were already facing that way. Bye bye. <laughs>